Thank you very much, Heather and other friends. It's a great honor for me, and I know for Ted, to receive this award. We are conscious that unlike the other 14 recipients of this award, we risked nothing in the path to it. We have presented a lawsuit, safe and sound, but the worst that happens to us is hate mail. Um, there's a lot of it, but um, my secretary screens it. Uh, we don't, we're not out there uh, enduring physical threats of violence. We're not enduring uh, the political risks that Mayor Newsom took. And so it is with particular humility that we accept this award. It is an enormous sense of pride not only to accept this award, but to accept it in this hall. This is a hall that is imbued with the soul of America. And that soul is a quality. When it says on the wall outside, we the people, it does not say we the white people, it does not say we the male people, it does not say we the straight people, it says we the people. And, and one of the geniuses of our founding fathers is that their principles and their rhetoric was far advanced to their lifestyle. When those words were written, we the people, was essentially we white male property owners. Over the course of the last 200 years, we have made the promise of we the people, all the people, increasingly a re reality. We have many areas in which we have much to do in terms of elim eliminating the last vestiges of discrimination. But there is only one area in which that discrimination continues to be in our laws. It continues to be not de facto, not social, but de jure. It continues to have the force not only of people's prejudices, but of the force of our government itself. When the state of California took away the right of gay and lesbian couples to marry, it put the full force of the state's power behind discrimination, and that is a terrible thing. In all of the areas that we still have progress to do, in the areas of racial discrimination, gender discrimination, discrimination against physically challenged people. It is only in this one area that we still have to undo laws in order to get through the barrier to get to people's hearts. One of the reasons that I am pleased to share this task with Ted Olson is because I'm hoping he can get me that fifth justice that I didn't get in Bush v. Gore. Another reason why I'm pleased is because I think it sends a message that this is not a fight between Republicans and Democrats. This is not a fight between liberals and conservatives. This is a civil rights fight, a fight for equality, a fight for the soul of our country. We are a nation that is not based on race or ethnicity. There is, no th there is nothing that is like a typical American. We don't look alike, we don't talk alike, we don't act alike. Our bloodlines are different. The only thing that unites us is a culture. And at the core of that culture is equality. And when we fray that culture, we fray the very heart and soul of America. And in the final analysis, equality and freedom is indivisible. We cannot discriminate 
against any group of our citizens without threatening the equality and the safety of all of our citizens. And this is what this lawsuit is about. It is to bring in the most intimate area of our life, one of the most important relationships any person can have, it is to bring equality in that area. And one of the things that we demonstrated in the trial, we demonstrated three things. One, marriage is a fundamental right, and the Supreme Court's ruled that over and over again, so that was pretty easy. The second thing was we demonstrated that preventing gay and lesbian couples from marrying hurt them and hurt the children that they're raising. And that's a pretty obvious thing too, but like lawyers do, we proved it over and over again with some of the most uh, eminent experts from around the world. And we also proved it from the defendant's own experts. Because one of the great things about a trial is you bring people in and they can't just stand up there and make speeches like they do. They have to answer questions. And there wasn't one of their experts who in the final analysis did not have to admit the terrible damage the discrimination causes to gay and lesbian couples and their children. And so we prove that not only from our witnesses, but from their witnesses and from their witnesses' own mouth. One of the, one of the interesting things was that um, after I took two of the uh, experts that they had as depositions uh, and they admitted that gays and lesbians had historically been subject to terrible discrimination, that the discrimination was essentially uh, based not on anything rational or any scientific evidence, but on prejudice. And they admitted that prohibiting gays and lesbians from marrying hurt them in serious ways and hurt the hundreds of thousands of children that gay and lesbian couples are raising. And they admitted that they had no evidence at all that gay and lesbian marriages would in any way undermine heterosexual marriages. They dropped them as witnesses. And they tried, we took their deposition on videotape. They then tried to prevent us from playing that videotape in trial. The judge let us play it in trial. And through the testimony of those witnesses and other witnesses they brought, we proved our case. And the last thing that we proved was that there is no rational basis None for limiting marriage to straight people. There's no advantage to anybody. And, and, and some people, people have said, um, gee, you did a great job in that trial. We didn't do a great job in the trial. What we did is we took a very easy set of facts because the other side did not have any precedent did not have any policy, didn't have any science, didn't have any facts. They had a bumper sticker that said, marriage is between a man and a woman. No why, no wherefore, no logic, no precedent, no science, just a bumper sticker. And it's pretty easy to try a lawsuit against a bumper sticker. So, we're not there yet. We've got a long way to go, and we've got some obstacles along the way. But I am confident that there will t come a time, and there's going to come a time when I'm still around, not just when you young people are around, when we will have eliminated the last vestiges of official discrimination in this country. And And I, and I promise you this, we will keep fighting that fight until we've succeeded. It doesn't make any difference how long, it doesn't make any difference how many courts we have to go to. But this is something that is a fight for many of you in this room, but it is a fight in a larger sense for every citizen in this country, because it is a fight for the heart and soul of what is America. Thank you.